to the world of the 300 millimeter to it. Anyway, so always gotta be careful. You have a lens like this on a camera because it's uh, so the case where you don't mount a lens on the camera. This is where you mount the camera on the lens. If you understand what that means. Two issues on the Nikon D850. There's a lot of uh, spoiled prissy pants that are complaining about uh, this particular camera. Number one, they can't get it, and that's obviously Nikon's fault for, uh, whew, oh my god, everybody's pissing and moaning about not being able to snag a Nikon D850. Certainly that's the case with uh, Nikon Incorporated that they should have anticipated this. I mean, I've been saying for years... Literally, it's been years, so it's going to be a full-frame version of the Nikon D500. I should have stuck with my original predictions, except for the hybrid um, hyperbole, which I thought would be the case, given some indicators. But I was correct initially. I should have gone with my original interpretation. It would just be a full-frame version of the Nikon D500, with a few added benefits and frills, which it certainly does have. Nikon should have anticipated an enormous amount of orders on this, and so Nikon is certainly, absolutely, and undeniably... <laughs> it's always funny when you can actually take the camera and lens, make sure the hood's screwed in tightly, and uh, balance it like that, which you really shouldn't do, because it's a lot of weight uh, actually pressing in upon the thread which the hood is attached to. Uh, secondly, people are complaining about really nonsense things on the, the Nikon D850. Importantly, outside of Nikon's flagship cameras, like the Nikon D3, D4, D4S, Nikon D5, D5 is pretty much a plastic chew toy, despite its horrible overprice and uh, the fact that uh, its specifications are horrible, it's still a flagship camera. This is also, I don't know if you remember the link, but this is a flagship level camera from Nikon. Now, you're saying, well, you know, you have to buy vertical grip for it. I hear a lot of nonsense, too. People saying, well, you got to buy vertical grip for it. The buffer uh, shuts down after 20 frames per second at uh, full 14-bit. And uh, this is true. You don't need to shoot at 14-bit. Of course, I've never shoot anything less than 14-bit. But what you're forgetting is that this is writing basically 46 megapixels. Nikon D5 is writing 20 megapixels, basically 21 megapixels. This camera is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I said this would be a legendary camera for Nikon, and it is. This is a legendary camera for Nikon. Nikon will sell the piss out of this. The only thing people are bitching about on the Nikon D850, this camera, is that they can't get their hands on it, number one. And number two, they're picking it apart for nonsense. Absolute absurdities and nonsense. It still is a conventional DSLR. The price on it, however, is extremely cheap. For $3,300, which if you adjust for inflation, that's actually cheaper than the Nikon D810. The Nikon D810, the reason why the shutter is so loud on the Nikon D852, as I've already explained in the past, is that this is an all-magnesium alloy body camera. Unlike the Nikon D750, Nikon D810, Nikon D800e, the uh, shutter assembly... Uh, the shutter mounting assembly is all magnesium. The front plate on this is all magnesium. Everything on this, this camera rings like a bell. On the mirror sound, the uh, the mirror uh, the mirror motor and the mirror and the actual shutter mech, it actually rings this camera like a bell. The reason why the shutter mech is so loud on this relative to the D800E, D750, D810, is that there's no sound absorbing carbon fiber and Paul, there is a very little in this, but I've seen the breakdown videos on this camera completely. I haven't taken this one completely apart. If you send me yours, however, I will gladly take it 100% apart. And I'll put it back together for you, too. Um, I'll do a teardown video. I'll do like a 10 video teardown. And no one's going to do that. <laughs> no one's going to send me their DA50 to tear down. But anyway, it's a flagship level camera from Nikon for $3,300. It has wonderful focus speaking on it. If you're worried about 9 frames per second, or actually without the vertical grip, uh, 7 frames per second, that's just a bit crazy. Uh, obviously improvements over this in the Nikon D5. D5 is obviously perfect for Nikon, excuse me, D5. I meant Nikon D500, excuse me, which is filming my face right now. Perfect for sports action and wildlife, obviously infinitely less ideal for portraiture and landscape and architecture than is this. This is the exact same pixel pitch density as the Nikon D500, a completely different sensor, however. 
It doesn't have radically improved dynamic range with an Icon D810, but because it is a BSI sensor, backside illuminated, it actually clocks off the information from the sensor faster than an Icon D810, but we're still talking about 46 megapixels of information compared to 20 megapixels on the Icon D5 and Icon D500. At $3,300, this camera is actually a steal. Even if you never, I'm a total vertical grip slut. Yeah, I said that. Even if you never buy a vertical grip for it, if you seven seven frames per second is not enough for you at 46 minutes, something's wrong with you. Additionally, so everybody's lying about the fact that you have to buy an expensive battery charger for the EN EL 18B battery, which goes in the vertical grip for the Nikon D. It's not true. There are plenty of off-brand Chinese battery chargers that run you about 50 bucks. eBay is loaded with them for charging the EN EL 18B battery that goes in the vertical grip for the Nikon D850, which also nobody has, by the way, including myself. I've got feelers out all over the damn place for vertical grip for the Nikon D850. This camera is a deal. It'll be legendary for Nikon. Nikon is really screwed up, hardcore, in not having enough of these. Everybody knows it, and everybody admits it. I've even had people from Nikon, well, two people that I know, that's like, yeah, Nikon screwed up. It's like, what the hell is up with this? Everybody's. There are a lot of people that are just that had pre-orders in on the D850, and they've uh, said, screw it. And they've just dropped their order on the D810, excuse me, the D850 here, and just uh, purchased a D810 or even a Fuji X-T2, which, of course, is my favorite camera of all time, which is sitting right there. That was, you know, it's good for Nikon to build up hype and release, like, you know, limited numbers. Limited doesn't mean anything, but like limited numbers of the Nikon D850. And like, oh my god, this camera's great, I gotta order one. And Nikon trickles them out. But Nikon's been so tight on the trickling. I don't know where the supply chain errors are. Everybody's complaining that's Nikon's uh, financial difficulties. That's absolute BS. That's not the case. It has to be some sort of ch supply chain error issue on the Nikon D850. Either on the sensor or something. Um... I don't know what it is. If I were to tell you, it would be purely speculating out my backside. Um, but this is an incredible camera, and adjusted for inflation, it is a much better damn camera than Nikon D810, of which I've owned a couple of, and I got rid of my Nikon D810 to buy this along with a couple lenses. Um, image output's incredible. If you need nearly a bottomless buffer, for stuff that, you know, non-portraiture, non-landscape, non-architecture, just buy, use or buy an Nikon D500. It's like, well, who? why should I buy an Nikon D850 or a Nikon, over a Nikon D500? It's like, well, this is the first and only Nikon camera that you can say does it all. Does it have the deep buffer of the Nikon D500? No, it doesn't, but it's a full-frame camera. That means it's perfect. This camera is perfect for everything. Sports, action, wildlife, photojournalism, architecture, portraiture, landscape, Everything, any branch of photography, the only thing it doesn't have is a super deep buffer, but I mean, you're talking about writing 20 megapixels from a crop sensor on an Icon D500 versus this, 46 megapixels. This is a baby medium format. Other people have said that. I don't know if they're copying me. I know I was the first person to review the D850 other than the people that, you know, are suck-ups to Nikon who had a pre, uh, you know, a pre-release version of the D850 that were actually talking about it and reviewing it. But uh, I was surprised I was able to get one, but I have connections. <laughs> hey, uh, I do a lot for some people, so yeah, I do have connections. Um, I didn't bump anybody from getting their D850 as opposed to myself, but uh, D850 is a steal. It's not overpriced at $3,300, and all the pissing and moaning I've heard from people outside of people wanting one and not being able to get it has been absolutely negligible and none. I've heard of one person that had an issue with the XQD card slot uh, eject button breaking on them. It doesn't matter what it is, cars, cameras, anything, you know, there's going to be someone out there that has a lemon that has an issue. But, I mean, no one's come back and said, oh, there's an issue with the D850. The lie that uh, has been promulgated by a particular website saying that manual focus lenses, that the flange distance is incorrect on this or something to do with quality control... You know, I've only got one camera, but I mean, others have tested as well. It seems to be absolute BS. Anybody backing up that claim, you know, they've never pr submitted any proof. It's been absolute hearsay from Sony fanboys. No one sub sub has, sub uh, has submitted any substantiation or proof 
therein to back up that other website's claims. So I guess that's the short and sweet of it. Although this video is not necessarily that short and sweet. Short and sweet of it of the Nikon uh, D850. It's always nice to have a lens on a camera that costs um, and is worth more than the actual camera. And this one is, or at least it was a few years ago. Now this camera's worth more than the lens, but not by much. Oh my god. By the way, if you ever want to destroy a camera really quickly, put a 300mm 2.8 on it and then lift the camera up without supporting the lens. <laughs> You'll quickly destroy the camera. Oh, so quickly. Duh. There we go. That's my crazy recovering from the flu synopsis on the Nikon D850. Um... Nikon is definitely really, you know, uh, having intercourse with a cross-eyed ugly dog when it comes to, you know, trickling out very few of these things. Nikon has really pissed off a lot of people. People that put in a pre-order immediately and there's just been like a, like an old man with an enlarged prostate that is just like, you know, dribble, dribble. <laughs> <laughs> is squeezing it out like an old man with an enlarged prostate on the D850s big time. And that's really pissing off a lot of people. So whoever at Nikon is uh, at fault for this or probably a parts supply chain issue, which is more likely the case, shame on you. For your 100th anniversary, that sucks. It's not good because... Hey, Nikon, I know Nikon's probably listening. Hey, Nikon, I've had a lot of people tell me, I had a pre-order in for a D850, but I got sick of waiting, and I said, screw it. <laughs> and I bought a Fuji instead. I've had more than a few people tell me that. How do you like that, Nikon? I bet that doesn't make you happy. And guess whose fault it is, Nikon? It's your fault. <laughs> Boom. Thank you for watching. And bye. Don't trickle out your 100th anniversary camera like an old man with an enlarged prostate trying to squeeze a few. No, no, that's pissed a lot of people off. <sighs> yeah, it has. Uh, not a smart move. <laughs> Somebody needs to be fired. Somebody needs to be fired.